Let's go, John. <sighs> it's a real life Spider Man. Hardcore parkour. This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Mercer Roberto, and just like the NBA Finals yesterday, the Stanley Cup Finals have shifted to Florida for Game Three tonight. And through two games, we really haven't had much of a series, with Vegas outscoring the Panthers 12 to four. They are just the seventh team in NHL history to have a plus eight or more goal differential through the first two games of the Stanley Cup Final. So how does Florida get back into this? Well, clearly they need to score more goals, but the main reason is between the pipes. Through the first three rounds, one of the reasons they were dominating was goaltending. Bob was the cons my favorite entering this series, and looking at those numbers, it's clear to see why. But through two games in this series, he's got a 5-5-2 goals against, an 8-26 save percentage. Now game two of the series got a little out of hand, as both teams racked up 148 combined pins. That's the second most penalty minutes all time for a Stanley Cup final game, with only game four and 86 between the Habs and Flames having more. Wow, imagine a time where two Canadian teams were in the Stanley Cup final. Dang. <laughs> After an off-season that just would not end, we can finally officially say it. The CFL is back, baby. The 2023 season opener kicks off tonight, as the BC Lions head to Calgary to take on the Stamps. Last season, the Lions won the season series two games to one, with some nail-biters along the way. The Lions also got the better of Calgary in the playoffs, with a 30-16 home victory in the West Divisional semifinals. The bad blood between these two teams runs a little deeper than scoreboard results, though. Last time these two teams met at McMahon Stadium, Lions linebacker Bo Lacombo followed the win by sharing this tweet, accusing Stamps linebacker Cam Judge of sucker punching a BC player. TSN's Farhan Lanji did some digging and found out that Lucky White had had been the player punched. Judge wound up being suspended one game for the incident. While Lacombo, Judge, and Whitehead are all still present on their respective rosters, this season's teams will feature turnover from both sides, most notably the quarterback position. The Stamps are set to enter their first season since 2011 without longtime quarterback Bo Levi Mitchell on the roster. Well, the Lions will be without 2022 breakout star Nathan Rourke, who's currently listed as the third string quarterback on the NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars. So instead, the quarterback battle will be between Burton Adams Jr. and Jake Mayer. And you can catch the CFL season opener live tonight on TSN. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. It's no secret this show loves food. So that just means when a food story goes viral at a sporting event, you know we're gonna be all over it. And that's exactly what happened yesterday at the Cleveland Guardians game, when this fan went to town on a giant jar of mustard. <coughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't anticipating gagging. Um, is it a wooden spoon? Oh, okay, wow, I have a theory about this. I'm thinking this guy suffers from intense heartburn because mustard is a great remedy, a natural remedy for heartburn. Now you know, the more you know, this guy bringing it to life. But this got us wondering, what is the grossest condiment to eat out of a jar? Starting with what he's eating, mustard. I mean, it is really gross. It, the, your initial reaction is to gag because it seems so gross. But again, he might be remedying some kind of ailment. Ketchup might be a little easier, but then it gets too sweet. You need to pair ketchup with food because it, there's just too much corn syrup, man. You, you, it's, not, it's not good for you. It's, ba it's bad. Mayo makes a little more sense because um, it does, it depends on what kind of mayo you're having. Like, do you have that tangy zip? I don't know. But you could probably have a couple of spoons of mayo and still be fine. I feel like it'd still be good. I've, I've, done, the, I've done a spoonful of mayo before. It's kind of tasty, honestly. Horseradish by far has to be the nastiest. Unless you're trying to clear your sinuses, why would you do a spoonful of horseradish? That is nasty. I can't even breathe when I take that stuff. Sauerkraut. I don't know how long. I don't know how many spoonfuls of sauerkraut you could really have without just getting that tart taste in your mouth. But at least there's some crunch to it, so you got something to chew on there. <laughs> now, joined by Matthew Shinetti to talk about the start of the CFL season, two days in a row. Great to see you, Shooter. What's going on, Marissa? Okay, Shooter, we're gonna go bigger picture here. What is the biggest storyline heading into the CFL season? My first storyline, first impressions. Big changes across the league. Sure, Jake Merritt took over for Bo Levi Mitchell late last season, but he's now the guy in Calgary. What does that look like? Geno Lewis is now in Edmonton. Trevor Harris is now the quarterback of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Cody Fajardo is now the starting quarterback of the Montreal Alouettes. Bo Levi Mitchell is now the starting quarterback of the Hamilton Tire Cats. But the biggest first impression for me, we saw a sprinkle of it in what he did in the Great Cup last year to lead the Argos to a win over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But Chad Kelly is now the guy in Toronto. What does that look like? A lot of guys will be making a statement early on in this season. Okay, now let's hear your second biggest storyline. My second storyline is the balance of power. Is it enough in Winnipeg still to have a two-time MLP at quarterback? Great offensive and defensive line, great linebackers, great receivers, or 
Or are they going to be missing something? And another team in the West, Edmonton, Saskatchewan, Calgary, BC, finally going to catch up to them. And in the East, yes, Montreal has Cody Fajardo, Jeremiah Masoli is in Ottawa, Chad Kelly's in Toronto. But Bo Levi Mitchell is now the guy in Hamilton, and they've put a lot in Bo Levi Mitchell, and they will host the Great Cup yet again this year. And they also own the CFO's longest Great Cup drought, having not won a championship in this century, not since 1999. They are all in on Bo. Can Bo deliver a championship and switch the balance of power back to Hamilton? Shooter, a pleasure as always. Enjoy the game tonight. Thanks, Marissa. And just a reminder, you can watch the season opener between the Lions and Stamps tonight on TSN. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. <laughs> Alright, the last couple days, Bauer has been in town, and me and the Bardown staff have been having a lot of fun. And I've combined these two days and two events together in one beautiful masterpiece, well known as Roberto on the Go. Enjoy. The second I walked in. Packed in here, look at this place. Okay, Greeted by the friendliest faces and some faces that you only know from the internet. There was food, Corwin did a holesy. Did we mention? We are at the Hockey Hall of Fame, baby. <laughs> what better place to have a hockey party with hockey people? Voila! <laughs> Trying to wrangle a team for a family photo was a bit of a stretch, but we got there. And we had to check out the merchandise. That's MVP? That's MVP right there. There was an entire theater dedicated to Chelsea. But there's no way I'm playing Nash. I will test my skills against the bar down boys. If you get two, I'll be impressed. Corwin did get two, and Luca got two, Eric got three, I think, Sam got none. Sometimes that's just the way she goes, that was my turn. Maybe I only got one, but that's really all I needed to feel good about myself. Pair that with all the incredible women at this event, and I was on top of the world. And Eric just had to eat it. Then to day two on the ice. I got there late because DSC comes first. Have you ever seen such a loaded bench with so many beauties? It was team black versus team white, and Luca was on the white team. I didn't see him until it was too late. I had already chosen a side, and good thing I did because they wanted to shoot. Yeah! Us non-skaters were so proud. After the game, I discovered I had my own locker, and it turns out I was on team white the whole time. Good thing I chose Delusion first, eh? That's all for today. We'll see you at Bikini Mouth Easter. No Pacific! Have a good one.